What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. This is gonna be poker vlog number 40, back at the Aria. It's been a while since we've been here. Wanted to switch it up. I like to bounce around, keep it fresh. Don't like to get comfortable in one spot. So we're at the Aria, gonna check out the two five games and go from there. And that's about it. Let's get right into the hands. All right, so we buy in for the max 1500. We watch a few orbits go by before picking up any sort of hand. Everybody's playing very tight, a lot of chops, so I'm gonna open it up here, pretty wide, four or five suited, under the gun. Every once in a while, you gotta do it to get this game going. So I make it 15. Action, of course, folds around to the big blind who defends. We go heads up to a flop, king, queen, six, with one diamond, the six of diamonds. Checks it over to me, and this is, of course, going to be a much better flop for me than him. So I go ahead and continue with a bet of 15, and he makes the call. Turn brings him 10 of diamonds. We pick up a flush draw now. He checks to me for a second time. I size it up and make it $50, and he quickly calls again. So we're putting him on some sort of like 10 jack, maybe king x suited, something not very strong. River pairs the board with a queen of hearts. He checks to me for a third time. And well, we came this far, can't give up now. We got about 160 in the pot. This is where I feel like a polarizing size bet makes sense. We're gonna have all the strong hands, ace jack, kings full, some big hands. So I size it up, bet $200. He tanks for a little bit and makes the lay down. So a good old fashioned bluff to start this one off. No blockers or anything necessary, just putting on some pressure in a tight game. Just a few hands later when the small blind with six, seven suited. We have a limp from under the gun. Early position raises to 15. I'm gonna go ahead and just defend here, looking to go multi-way with this sort of hand from early aggression. So I make the call, big blind and limper call. We go four ways to a pretty good flop. Four, five, nine with two hearts, one club. I check and action checks around. Turn card is a six of diamonds. So now we have second pair and I feel like it's probably good. I go ahead and take the lead and bet $20, which I don't really like the sizing. I think I could go a little bigger there. Um, big blind calls 20 and the other players fold. River is an eight of hearts, completing our straight, but it also completes the front door flush. I could probably just check call here, put out a small bet, either is probably fine. Um, I opt to go with a smaller bet, 50 bucks for some value, maybe against a nine or two pair, maybe he hits an eight. And he does find a raise to $150, which I didn't wanna see. I think a lot of the times we're gonna have the same hand here, so I just go ahead and toss out the call, and he does have jack seven for a chop pot. So kinda don't like my sizing on the turn there as much. I think I should go like 40, 50 bucks on the turn. We deny equity from that jack seven and just take down the pot on the turn. So let's chop that one up and move on. Next we have ace queen offsuit from under the gun plus one. I take it up to $15, next player calls. Player in late position calls 15 and action is on the small blind who wants to play for more money. He takes it up to $60, which is pretty small with three players in for 15 already. Action's back on me and I don't really wanna play ace queen offsuit four ways and I don't wanna fold. So I take the aggressive route here, put the pressure back on and raise to $210. Next two players fold. I figure if he can five bet here, we can just make the lay down. But um, a lot of times we're gonna take this one down. He does think for quite a while, said he made a mistake on his sizing, wasn't paying attention. And he does end up making the lay down. And I really like the play here because it only has to work like seven out of 10 times to be profitable. You know, every once in a while he's gonna five bet, we fall, we lose the 210, no big deal. But if it works as many times as it has been, we take in 90 bucks in dead money. So we scoop that one and uh, let's move on. Next, we have a real monster, Pocket Kings. Game has picked up a little bit. People are straddling. Under the gun straddle is on on this one, and player on my right makes it $35. Definitely going to three bet here and isolate. I take it up to $125. Action folds all the way around to the original Razor who quickly announces. Wasn't sure if I heard that right, but he does slide out $620. Not sure if it was a misclick. He puts almost half of his stack in. He started with 1300. I had about 1600. So he's got about 680 behind. I almost wanted to just flat call and maybe let him blast off on a flop, but that's kind of risky as well. There's already enough money in there. So I said, ah, let's just get it all in. I don't really think he has aces going that huge. And uh, well, we hope not anyway. So I put it all in, get the camera ready to get the run out. The dealer throws the call button out almost. He thought he can't fold either. And he goes into the tank now. 
and he's kind of eyeballing his stack, seeing if he's forced to call, and eventually lays this one down. I couldn't believe it. Um, so it must have been a really bad hand, or maybe he just messed up on the size. Regardless, uh, $637 gets pushed our way without any risk, no flop, and uh, I'll gladly take that one. Next, we have Ace-10 offsuit under the gun. I open it for $15. Next player calls, and the button makes the call. We go three ways to a 10 high flop, 10 6 5 with two clubs. Sometimes I'm going to bet, sometimes I'm going to check this one. This shouldn't really be a good flop for me, so I go ahead and check it, see what develops. Next player checks, and the button fires out a $40 bet. Almost the size of the pot, so I'm going to just call here, let him blast off with clubs or a straight draw. Shoot, maybe he has a better hand already with like 5 6. That's possible. So I make the call of $40. Next player folds. We see a blank deuce of diamonds on the turn. I check it to him, and he tosses out a $100 bet this time. Of course, I'm not going anywhere. Top pair, top kicker. We beat all of his tens, and my hand has been under-repped, so I make the call. And the river brings a king of hearts. It's a pretty good card. Only worried about king ten. We beat all the other tens he can have, so flush is missed, straight is miss. I go ahead and check it, see if he wants to blast away again. He does indeed check back queen 10 of diamonds, so got him out kicked there with the 10, and we take down a nice pot. Played for a little bit longer here. The game ended up drying up. That player left, so I said, let's get out of here, check out the South Point. We booked a $758 win there. Get called for the 2-3 game first while we're waiting for 3-5. Let's get started here at the South Point. Just a few minutes in, it's my button straddle for $6. There's a raise to $20 from the hijack. You guys know me, I'm defending pretty light on my straddle, so I make the call. Small blind calls as well. We go three ways to a nice flop, queen three deuce with two clubs. So we got over card, flush draw, backdoor straight draw. Small blind checks it and original razor bets $30. He just reloaded for 600. He had just got stacked right when I sat down. So I go ahead and make the call and small blind folds. Heads up to a seven of spades on the turn, no help but he checks it to me. Doubtful he's gonna check a queen, so maybe he has a small pair, maybe just ace high, ace jack, or something like that, so maybe we can just take this one down right here, and if he calls, well, we have some outs, so I go ahead and bet $75, and he does indeed make a quick call. We get some help on the river. One of our outs hits. It's a king of diamonds, giving us top pair. I'm happy with it. He checks it to me. I think we got a clear green light to go for some value against any of his queens he might have checked smaller pairs so I bet $100 looking to get paid off but he does fold face up pocket jacks so we got lucky there on the river and he makes a nice fold just a few hands later we get pocket fives in the hijack under the gun player limps next player makes it 15 I make the call small blind calls uh, limper calls we go four ways to a good looking flop four deuce deuce rainbow Action checks to me. I figure we have the best hand, decent amount of the time here, so I bet $25. We get a call from Bob in the small blind. Shout out to Bob, viewer of the channel. Nice to finally meet you. Bob calls and I don't like it already. Next two players fold. We can't really beat anything he's calling with. Over pairs, fours, full, quads. So we get a jack of spades on the turn. When he checks to me, I just check. I'm done with it here. And the miracle five of clubs falls on the river, giving us a full house. He checks to me again. feel like we can maybe get some value from over pairs we were just talking about, six of sevens, uh, something like that. So I bet $50, and he does make the call. I tell him it's very likely I got lucky, and he did tell me he had pocket nines. So nice hand, Bob. I got very lucky. Good to see you. We'll see you again soon. Took a little break before jumping in the 3-5 game. We bring 1500 over here, and let's get started. Pretty card dead for the first half hour or so until we pick up the number one hand on my button straddle, no less. So it's $10 to go. There's about four limpers and then the small blind and big blind limp as well. It's my option. I got to go pretty big here with that many limpers. I make it $75 to play. Don't care if they fold or if I get one caller. Unfortunately, they do all fold and we take down a little pot. Next, we pick up Ace-Queen Offsuit from Under the Gun Plus One. The $10 button straddle is on, so I go ahead and take it up to $35 to play. Action folds around to the straddler who defends. He's been playing quite a few hands. We go heads up to a decent flop, Jack-9-5 with two hearts. Kind of split here whether I'm going to bet or check. It's probably 
This one I opt to check and see what he does. And he does fire out a $50 bet. We have two overs, the ace of hearts, and some bad intentions to maybe take this one away on future streets. So I go ahead and make the call, see a turn. It brings a nine of spades, pairing the board. I think it's a great card. I check and he quickly checks this one back. I think we might be ahead. River brings a six of spades. I go ahead and check and he checks back. I think we might win, but he shows the six eight of hearts. River's a six for a pair and he takes this one down. All right, we switch it up again and to my favorite seat to vlog from. We pick up ace queen again in the small blind. Same player from last hand opens to $25 in the hijack. Like I said, he's been kind of like 5xing it, going pretty big. I'm going to go ahead and 3-bet here out of position. I make it $100 to play. He takes a little bit of time here before flat calling. We're both deep. Um, I have a little over $1,500. he has got me covered. So we go heads up to a flop, king, 7, 8, rainbow. So we whiff, but it's not all bad. It's a king high board. It's going to favor me more than him. I'm going to have the ace king, pocket aces more, more often. So I go ahead and c-bet, which I'm going to do 100% of the time on this type of board. I bet $80, and he does make the call. Turn card is not great. A six of clubs connects with two pair hands, nine, ten. I think I'm going to check back most of my strong hands, like aces, maybe even a set sometimes. So I go ahead and check. Pretty much going to give up here if he fires, but he checks it back, which is interesting because I think he's going to have to bet any king or a set. So it feels like he has a hand like maybe nines through queens as possible. Something with some showdown value. He's looking to get to showdown for cheap. So the river brings an eight of hearts, which pairs the board. Okay, so do we give up or go for it? I think this is a really good card for me with aces and ace king. I'm going to feel really safe. Of course, I can have kings full as well, checking that turn. So I think I'm going to go for it and put hands like nines, tens, jacks in a really tough spot and go big. So I size up with a bet of $400 on the river, and he goes into the tank for a very long time. That is my actual heartbeat pounding. That's what it feels like anyway when you're bluffing. You feel like they can hear it. He's eyeballing me, grabbing chips, thinking... I'm trying not to make any faces. I feel like he's going to sniff it out, but he eventually does find the lay down. So I think we got him off a little bit better hand. Like I said, I thought it might be like nines, tens, or jacks. However, he very adamantly said he folded ace king, which I can't hardly believe. I think he's got to look me up there with ace king. But regardless, happy to swoop in a nice little pot there with a bluff. Um, and shortly after this, the game actually breaks and I get moved to the 2-3 game. And I think I've been playing really solid up until this point. So let's go over some of the bonehead plays over at the 2-3 game. So I ended up losing a little over 100 in that 3-5 game. Take 600 bucks over to the 2-3 and I buy the button my very first hand and I wake up with pocket tens. Under the gun player opens for 15. Two players call and the button makes it $75 and he has about 125 behind. So this is bonehead play number one. This is just an easy fold. Yeah, it's pocket tens, it's a nice hand, but we don't have any money invested. And remember, the button raised the under the gun aggression. So it's gonna be pretty strong. And even if he is making a move, we still have the under the gun opponent to worry about. So I should have just let this one go, but in the moment, kind of talked myself into maybe the button is stealing or I'm in a coin flip situation, which you don't wanna be in that situation anyway, a coin flip at best. So I ended up making it 200 bucks to isolate we do get it heads up against the button and the board runs out. Blanks, we don't improve, and of course he has queens. So we make a $200 mistake and lose that one just as we deserve to. Just a few hands later, I'm in the cutoff with ace nine suited. We have a limp from early position. Middle position player opens to 15. I make the call here in position, button and limper calls. We go four ways to a flop, ace five three with two clubs. Uh, first player checks. Original razor bets $35. I go ahead and make the call, and the other players fold. So we go heads up to a great turn card, the nine of diamonds. He checks it over to me. He might be checking a lot of big aces on the turn here, just a little bit worried about two pair. Or he has a flush draw. I can't imagine him having nothing leading into three other players. So I go ahead and size it up, make a $100 bet on the turn to get value from his bigger aces, and uh, charge the flush draws, and he ends up making the call. River is a jack of hearts, pretty much a blank. If he has ace jack, you know, good for him. He's going to get the money. He has less than a pot size bet left, about 290. So I'm going to go for all of it. 
Hopefully he gets sticky with ace king or ace queen. Also, since I just lost that pot, maybe it looks like I'm bluffing. Also, clubs missed. So I go ahead and rip it all in, and he goes into the tank for a long time, asks me if I got lucky enough to have ace jack. He does eventually find the fold button. Said he folded two pairs, so I guess it was ace three or ace five, but people have been folding monsters. I never saw it, but um, we take that one down and uh, feels good to win a pot after that last mistake. Next, I'm on the button straddle with pocket sixes. So it's $6 to go. We have a limp from early position. Action folds around to the big blind who takes it up to $28 to play. The limper folds and I go ahead and make the call here in position. We go heads up to a flop, five, five, 10. So pretty good flop, misses all the over cards. He quickly leads out for $30. I think he's going to miss this flop good percentage of the time here. I go ahead and make the call. Turn brings an eight of clubs. He quickly checks it. So I don't think I need to go big here. I just want to bet to fold out the ace highs, deny equity from the over cards. So I make it $65 to go, and he does make the lay down. Next, we are on the button straddle again with ace king on the $6 button straddle. There's two limpers from early position. Middle position makes it $35. Next player calls. Action's on me. I don't want to just flat here, obviously, um, multi-way. We're gonna be going like six ways to a flop, so I wanna see if either of these players have big hands, put them to the test for all the chips. The original Razor has about 400. Next player had, uh, I think about two, 250. So I go ahead and basically pot it, make it 175, pretty much committing myself to calling an all-in from either of them. Action folds around to the middle position. Original Razor who ships it for $400. We didn't really wanna see that but uh, hopefully it's a coin flip type situation. I'm not really upset about this play. It's just a bloated pot. And uh, you know, the game is two, three, six, this hand. So he ships it, next player folds. I obviously have to call the 225 more. We get the bad news when it's pocket aces, worst case scenario for us. Board runs out clean for him. We almost get the chop there if we could hit that gut shot on the river, but uh, lose a big hand there. Ace king versus aces, nothing we can really do. Next, I straddle under the gun and we have four five offsuit. We see a limp from the first player. Next player makes it uh, $16. One player calls, small blind calls. So obviously I'm calling 10 more dollars, a lot of money in this pot. And the under the gun limper calls. So we go five ways to a flop, king nine five. We flop bottom pair. We all check it to the original razor who bets small, $25. Next player calls 25 and action folds to me. I'm gonna peel one here with bottom pair, small bet into a pretty big pot. So I call the 25 and the next player on my left calls. So we go four ways to a bingo, four of spades on the turn. We have bottom two pair. I check with intentions to check raise the original razor on this one. It's a dry board, king nine, five, four. Gonna put pressure on ace king, but unfortunately action checks around. So we're looking for a blink on the river and we don't get it. It's a six of diamonds, the front door flush comes in. so. Can't really fire now. Straight gets there, flushes get there with four players in or three other players in. It's likely one of them has it. So I go ahead and check it. We're gonna let someone bluff at it or they might just have the best hand. Checks to the original Razor who now wants to fire the river card. Bets $125. Next player folds. I'm gonna have to look him up here. He's been uh, looking like a little tilted. He went from about 800 to 400. So I make the call and he announces ace high. So. We win with bottom two pair, and looks like we got the max on that one. <laughs> All right, bonehead play number two. I have queen 10 suited in the cutoff. Uh, under the gun plus one raises to $15. I go ahead and make the call. Button calls, small blind calls, and the big blind, it's his very first hand. He takes it up to $60. Never seen him before. He has 500 in his stack. Um, the initial razor, razor folds, so I can honestly just get away from this hand now, but I want to play a hand against a deeper stack in position, so I go ahead and make the call. I'm also thinking it might bring in the players behind me, which it does. Button call 60 and the small blind. So we're going four ways to an unbelievable flop. Ace king nine with the ace king of hearts. We flop a royal flush draw. We've never hit a royal flush live. Let's do this. Small blind checks and the big blind bets. Tiny, $55. I'm like drooling over the price here. I obviously just make the call and uh, the button folds and small blind calls as well. 
So we go three ways to a blank four of clubs on the turn. Small blind checks, and now the original Razor checks, and I can't believe it. I have a free shot at the Royal. Take the free card, Rob. It's a free shot. Take the free card. This is a bad board for you to bluff on. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, he did it. I went ahead and shipped it all in, thinking maybe I can take this pot on the turn. Let's talk about why that's very terrible. This isn't high stakes on the Hustler, where people are going to be messing around very often out of the big blind. This is 2-3, no limit. Big blind's going to be really heavy with ace-king, aces, kings in this situation. So it's just a terrible board to ship it. If the board was like 7-8-9 with two hearts, I like that much better because we can rep two pair of straights. We can put kings and aces in a really tough spot. So I ship it, and naturally the next player folds. Big blind snap calls and snaps us off with pocket kings. We do have outs, of course, but we brick it, and we lose just as we should have. Should have taken the free card, and that was bonehead play number two. So after that, I'm pretty much going to wrap up this session. Kind of annoying. Um, we were up about 1000 bucks at our high point. We only end up winning about 250 on the night. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for episode number 40. Hope you enjoyed all the hands. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and catch some future poker content. Um, as always, here are the stats after every session. Um, the No Limit Hold'em stats as we go along here. So, yeah. Those mistakes at the end pretty much cost me all my profit. Pretty annoying. I gotta tighten up in that area. Gotta make a discipline lay down with the tens, which really isn't that discipline. And then the queen ten of hearts is a terrible shove. Just gotta take the free card. Um, don't be greedy. It's not even greedy. It's just a bad spot. Um, you know when you're pushing all the money in, going, I shouldn't do this. That's that's it's not a good idea. <laughs> so. Uh, couple mistakes which were costly but we still managed to book a little winner on the night which is good um so we'll keep that momentum going forward the next vlog is going to be from mandalay bay and a few hands from the win we got in a really fun game at mandalay uh two five game the other night so stay tuned for that one next week stay to the end for a cool trick shot this is going to be a good one we're keeping it punt related since i punted off a little bit of money in this one I don't mind the other bluffs, like, you know, the ace-queen bluff and the four or five of diamonds bluff, for example, to start off the vlog. Those are just poker hands that you're bluffing with. Those are good spots. But the queen-10 was just terrible. Might have been my worst play since I started vlogging. I really, I really hate that play. So, uh, you know, move forward. We learn from it and uh, keep it going. So thanks for checking out the video, guys. Stay tuned for the next one. Good luck at the tables, and we'll catch you soon.